Chronic myeloid leukemia. What's blood got to do with it? Body is an extraordinary machine composed of many mechanisms that are programmed to work together, allowing for proper function. From the moment of conception, a collection of cells divide and differentiate to form organ systems that make up our bodies. And as we grow, the cells in our bodies continue to replenish itself with new cells in order to maintain health. Stem cells are a class of undifferentiated cells derived from bone marrow. These cells play an essential role in our health as they're needed to differentiate into new blood cells. But what happens to our bodies when this replenishment of cells can't occur normally? In some cases, this may lead to the development of chronic myelogenous leukemia, or more commonly known as CML. So what exactly is CML? It's a cancer within both the blood and the bone marrow, which results in an overproduction of white blood cells known as granulocytes. Statistics show that CML makes up to 10% of all leukemia cases. It can occur at any age, but is most prevalent over the age of 50. And if diagnosed early with treatment, the five-year survival rate for CML is over 90%. Some of the most common symptoms include easy bleeding, lack of energy, loss of appetite and weight, as well as pale skin. However, it's important to note that these are very common symptoms for other minor diseases or infections, so it's best to consult your doctor. Now let's delve into how CML occurs. The bone marrow is a soft fatty substance in the cavities of the bones in which red and white blood cells, as well as platelets, are produced. Normally, the bone marrow makes blood stem cells that become mature blood cells over time. In CML, blood stem cells divide abnormally into granulocytes that don't become healthy white blood cells. The buildup of granulocytes in the blood and bone marrow results in less room for healthy red and white blood cells as well as platelets. This therefore leads to infections, anemia, and easy bleeding. Chronic myelogenous leukemia is caused by a chromosomal disorder which leads to the formation of an abnormal chromosome called BCR-ABL. BCR-ABL results from the translocation between chromosome 9 and 22 during cell division. This can be found in approximately 90% of CML patients. This new abnormal chromosome is known as a Philadelphia chromosome and results in the production of tyrosine kinase, which is a malicious enzyme causing CML cells to grow and reproduce out of control. So let's consider what happens in the case of treatment for an individual with leukemia where cancer is not a mass collection of cells which can be surgically removed. Do you think that the combination of radiation and chemotherapy would help mitigate the spread of leukemia? The answer to this would be yes. You see, radiation is used to damage a cancer cell's DNA making it unable to divide, while chemotherapy uses a variety of drugs to help slow and destroy cells. However, it's important to note that both radiation and chemotherapy don't always limit themselves to only cancerous cells, and by that I mean that healthy cells are also compromised throughout the treatment process. Therefore, oftentimes, once leukemia patients undergo treatment, a bone marrow transplant is later used to replace these damaged cells with a donor's healthy stem cells to help reboot the immune system. Although these treatments are pretty common, they actually aren't always the most effective. So where does that leave us then? Well, recent advancements in technology has led us to the use of biological targeted therapy. This form of therapy uses drugs to target specific molecules such as proteins and genes in cancerous cells. Imatinib, more commonly known as Gleevec, is a medication designed to directly block tyrosine kinase activity. This blockage forces leukemic cells to undergo programmed cell death. A study conducted in 2006 by Drucker and colleagues concluded that administering Gleevec in the chronic phase of CML produced durable responses in a high percentage of cases where it was followed 553 patients diagnosed with CML taking imatinib. They found that the 5-year survival rate was approximately 89%. The Gleevec story is a phenomenal example of how knowledge of the biological functioning of a cell can lead to a life-saving medical treatment. So now that we've learned more about CML, let's review some of our take-home messages. CML accounts for 10% of all leukemia cases and is represented as a cancer within both blood and bone marrow. The underlying cause to this is the production of tyrosine kinase by the Philadelphia chromosome. 
And most importantly, there are effective treatments such as Gleevec with a survival rate of 90%. So what's blood got to do with it, you ask? Well, the answer is everything. With the recent advancements in technology, the future is looking bright for leukemia. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about chronic myeloid leukemia, check out the links below and talk to your healthcare provider. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe to the McMaster Demystifying Medicines channel for more amazing videos. We'll see you next time.